Amen, 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 amen. And all the negative negativity that's in the world, um, it is very, very important for us to see ourselves through a different lens, to see the world through a different lens, to understand that even in the negativity, God is greater than everything. And um, so I'm, my hope and my prayer is that, that this series um, will be that for you, as it has been for me. As I go through this, as I study it, um, and get to know these passages of Scripture, be reminded again of these passages that I've read so many other times, to see it from a different perspective, to be reminded of who Jesus is and what he came to do uh, is, is an incredible encouragement to me, and I, and I pray that it is for you as well. So let's pray together. Father, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity that we've had to sing praises to you, and now we continue our worship in, in looking at your word and seeing its truth to be reminded of how good you are, to be reminded of all that Christ came to be, to be reminded that in the midst of the negativity that we can rely and trust in you because you care for us. God, when the circumstances of our life overwhelm us, I pray that we would reach for you. Pray that in this moment we will can, we will be reminded of how how great your love is for us. God, I pray that we would begin to grasp and comprehend the relationship that's available to us with you. And that we would leave here with a deeper appreciation of who you are. Open your word up to us, God. Help us to see it the truth of it, and help us to be willing to apply it to our lives. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. John chapter 10 is where we're going to be. I'll have the scripture up on the screen for you here in a moment, but um, if you want to turn to it, because we're going to be referring to this passage a lot. Um, there is not much care in this world right now. People who say that they're defending the rights of of people are destroying those very lives that they are trying, that they say they are defending. Uh, they just don't, just don't see much care anymore about anything, personal property, or uh, we don't see care about individuals. We don't see care about any of that right now. Our news feeds are just filled with negativity, filled with evil and so it's easy for us then to think that that there is no care for us it's easy for us to think in those moments when we failed when we have done something wrong to think that God doesn't care about us we can look at a world even there are some who are looking at this world right now and seeing it our society anyway and out in the United States anyway those of us there might be people thinking well, God doesn't care about the United States. Look at what's happening to it. But the reality of that is different than, than the perception. God still cares. Unfortunately, we're, a lot of us, doing this to ourselves. We as citizens are kind of falling apart a little bit. But that doesn't diminish the fact that God cares about you. That God, God cares about the rioters. God cares about those who are evil. And we need to remember, in those moments when you feel overwhelmed by the negativity, I want you to know that Jesus cares about you. This passage that we're going to look at in John chapter 10 is a beautiful passage, and I just really want you to grasp, as I was reading this last week, um, I, I 
I, tears welled up in my eyes because I, I realized sometimes we just sort of take this stuff for granted. Sometimes we, we take the care that God has for us for granted. We don't really stop to contemplate the depth of it, the width of it, the length of it. And, and I want you to see, I hope and I pray that you see this passage, and maybe you've read several times through a different lens, to see and to hear Jesus' compassion for his people. Okay. It says there, Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when the wolf attacks and the flock scatters, the, the man runs away because he, has, he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is because is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, he is a demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? The one thing, first thing I want you to see and know here is that Jesus knows you. In verse 3, he says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. His own sheep. The shepherd, unlike the hired hand, has invested himself into his sheep. He's bought them or brought them, brought them out of their, of their mother's wombs and, and given them a place to stay. He has invested time and energy into them, and he knows his sheep by name. And that word know there means that there is a relationship. That he doesn't see them as livestock. He doesn't see them as, as people that are, as, as sheep that can be gotten rid of. He sees them as, as his own. He sees them as part of his, his family. Yes, they are his livelihood. But he sees them as more than that. Because he has given them names. And he leads them to the pastures that they need to go to. And he wants them to thrive. And he wants them to do well. And he wants them to, to, to multiply. He wants all of that for his sheep. Jesus knows you. He knows you. Psalm 139, we're going to look at verses 1 to 16. It says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from, a, from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely you hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. And that word hemmed in means that he is, he is our enclosure. He is the one who protects us. He is the one who watches our back. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to understand or attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be too dark for you. When I see that verse, I, when I see that verse in particular, you, you see a person who wants to hide from God because they think that their sins are too awful for them to be forgiven. And if I can hide myself from God, then he won't see my shame. He won't see my guilt. But God seeks out, seeks us out, even in our darkest place. And he goes on to say, the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. And the reason that he seeks us out, the reason that he loves us that deeply is the next verses, for you created, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the, day, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. This is why we fight for the unborn. Because God knows their names too. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 30 and 31, Jesus says, and even the very hairs on your head are numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So it doesn't matter what we've done. God loves us and seeks us out in our darkness. And he knows you. So then the question becomes, will you know him? Will you know him? Will you have this relationship? This, that, again, that word know means not just a knowledge of something, but this intimacy that we know each other intimately. Jesus knows even the number of hairs that we have on our head. And so for us, we should be trying to get to know him. I mean, isn't it wonderful to think about the fact that the creator of the universe, you say that again, the creator of the universe wants to have a relationship with you? When I think about that, when I think the fact that he wants to have a relationship with me, I'm blown away by that. And yet we have to be able to hear his voice. This is a face of a child who knows the voice of a parent. This is the face of a child who lights up when, when, they hear, when, when they hear mommy's voice or daddy's voice. This is the way we should light up when we, when we hear Jesus' voice, when we, we hear him speaking to us, when we, when we read his word and we know he's talking about us and we know he's talking to us. This should be the, the radiance that should be on our face. So this is the face of, of someone who knows the voice of the person who's talking. This is the face. This is the face that I see when I talk to a child. I don't know him. We want to know Christ. We don't want to shy away from him. We don't want to be afraid of him. Paul says he, in chapter 3 of Philippians, Paul is kind of giving his resume. These are all the things that I was able to accomplish in my young age. This is, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I was the most zealous person that you could ever meet in my classroom. I was the most zealous teacher that you could ever meet. I, I, I was that guy. I had accumulated all kinds of awards and all kinds of acclamation. But he, he concludes it with, but that's all 
rubbish. It's garbage compared to the greatness of God. And then he concludes with, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. And my prayer is that because He knows you, hopefully you will want to get to know Him. The other thing that we see from Jesus here, and the reason that we know that He cares about us is because He laid down His life for you. Look at the number of times in, in John chapter 10 that, that He uses that phrase, I laid down my life for them. I laid down my life for them. He's talking about the sheep. What's interesting, too, is verse 16. Um, he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. You know who he's talking about there? You and me. The Gentiles. The non-Jews. Because the people who were living at that time who were believing in Jesus were people who were part of the sheep pen. And now we've been grafted in. We've been allowed to come in. We've been allowed to enter the pen because of our belief and trust in who Jesus is. In 1 John chapter 3, it says, the command is that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so because we believe that, then we are a part of God's kingdom. We are a part of this sheep pen. And He laid down His life for you too. First John chapter 3, verse 16, the first part of verse 16 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So we know Jesus cares about us because he laid down his life for us. Paul says that he laid down his life while we were still sinners. Paul says that we were enemies of God and still Jesus died for us. Still, Jesus laid down his life for us. I mean, how awesome is that? How awesome is that? That's not a rhetorical question, ladies and gentlemen. I'll train you. One of these days, I'll train you. Because he laid down his life for you, will you listen to him. He says a couple of different times they hear my voice. They listen to his voice. Do you know what the word listen means? It's not just about hearing something that's said. Listening involves obedience, understanding. Because the sheep in the sheep pen, if they don't follow when Jesus leads them out or when, when the shepherd leads them out, then they'll starve. They won't go to the pasture. They won't get the drink that they need. They won't get the food that they need. They won't, they'll be stuck there. We've been called into a deeper relationship with Jesus. We've been called into a, a deeper relationship Knowledge of who he is. Again, not just the knowledge of him, not just, not just memorizing a bunch of facts about Jesus, but actually getting to know who he is. And trying to comprehend him, and then once we've comprehended it, then to, to actually do what he tells us to do. So for us, we know that Jesus cares about us because he knows us. He knew us from the very beginning, even before you drew your first breath. Jesus knew you. And even though we are the worst of people, we can be complete sinners, He still died for us. That's evidence enough that He cares. Even in the midst of all the stuff that we are seeing, He still cares. Even in the midst of of all the things that you're involved in, all the things that you're struggling with, He still cares. Even in your chronic pain, He still cares. 
Even, even in your joblessness, He still cares. Even in your sin, He still cares. Jesus did everything. God did everything through Jesus to make sure that we know, know and understand how deeply He loves us, how much He cares about us. So in a world of negativity, when it seems that everything is chaos and it looks like God, God doesn't care, here's a scripture that tells us the exact opposite. God does care. And He knows us. And He wants us to know Him. Will you do that? Will you know Him in the way that He knows you? Will you seek that relationship with Him? This is good news for us. The creator of the universe wants to know us and wants us to have this relationship. And he left the door wide open for us to walk through. The choice then becomes ours, whether we'll do it or not. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us, for seeing a world in chaos and yet still caring about us. You created the world out of chaos, so if anybody understands chaos, it's you. Sometimes we forget that because a lot of the chaos that we face is out of our control. So Lord, I pray that we would trust you in those moments when, when we're not sure if you care. Help us to remember scriptures like this one that show us that you do. God, you are great and powerful. God, who can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. May we trust you and believe that to our core. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.